Hey, how's it going everyone? Jurassic Ninja, and I do have a really bad cold for this side-by-side. -side. With that being said, let's move on. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3, a true classic in the skateboarding genre. Pro Skater 3 was developed by Neversoft and published by Activision under Activision O2 label in 2001 for the PlayStation 2, PlayStation 1, Game Boy Color, and GameCube. In 2002, it was released on Microsoft Xbox, Game Boy Advance, Windows, Mac OS, and the Nintendo 64 which happens to be the last game to ever be released on the N64, at least in America. Another interesting tidbit is that it was the first PlayStation 2 game to feature online support. Tony Hawk 3 was also the first game in the franchise to feature online capabilities, and users could go online on PS2 using the USB Ethernet adapter, or later with the official network adapter, since it wasn't available at launch of this game. On PC, you would play using the GameSpy servers. Oh, GameSpy. I used to live off GameSpy servers. Something that's very interesting is that the Xbox version didn't even feature any online modes. Players did find a workaround, though, by using System Link Bridging. There was a multiplayer mode called Control Zone, which is a team-based game in which you take control of zones, similar to zone control games on Battlefield, except without the bloodshed. There are a number of playable skaters to choose from, and some are awesome skaters to unlock, such as Darth Maul, Wolverine, Doom Guy, which is exclusive to PC, and X-Ray, which is exclusive to Xbox. You can play on a number of skate tracks, but Cruise Ship, Warehouse, Burnside, and Roswell are exclusive to the sixth generation of consoles and the PC. The Xbox gets an exclusive level titled Oil Rig, PS1 and N64 get Downhill, GBA gets The Zone, and Game Boy Color gets Paris, France. The PlayStation 1 and Nintendo 64 versions are technically Tony Hawk 3, but they are not using the same graphics engine or source code. They are using the same engine that was used for Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. Everything on these two ports was remade from the ground up. When looking side by side, you can see that the level layouts are the same, but everything else is just different. The Japanese version of Pro Skater 3 on PS2 features three more Japanese skaters, and I'm not gonna try to attempt to pronounce their names. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 received critical acclaim from critics with the PlayStation 2 version being tied for the highest rated PlayStation 2 game on Metacritic. Starting with the Skater Select screen, I will first compare the three console versions. The Xbox looks the best, just a lot sharper in visuals. The shadows on the PS2 aren't nearly as dark, and I'd say the PlayStation 2 is slightly better looking over the GameCube. Also on Xbox, there's a Darth Maul board right there, but I'm not sure if it has something to do with what I did or not, I kinda forgot. Bringing in the PC into the fold is clearly the best one, but one interesting thing is Darth Maul's lightsaber. First of all, the lightsaber is light, so there shouldn't be any shadow at all, but there is. And also on the PC, it shows the red glow instead of a black shadow like the other ones. This could be a Windows 10 thing since this is an older game. Also, the choking animation starts right away on GameCube and Xbox, but on PS2 and PC, it takes a few more seconds. Not much to say about Wolverine, except that he just looks really awesome. Berserker Barrage! And Demon Chick, my capture for Xbox got a bit laggy, so ignore that part. When looking at the PC, I'm sure once again this is just a Windows 10 thing, but there isn't any fire. Zooming into the fire, I think it looks best on the PS2. It's not as big, but shows more detail. Let's add PS1 and Nintendo 64. We can see that they both use different backgrounds, but stick with the skate shop theme. The PS1 is more crisp, but way more blocky. The Nintendo 64 is pretty smooth looking. It also looks like the logo might be mirrored on his shirt on Nintendo 64. If you look at the better consoles, you see that the wave part is on the right. Same with the PS1, I think. But on the Nintendo 64, it's on the left, I think. I could be wrong, but this is just what I see. Here, there is a lot of aliasing on the consoles, a bit less on the Xbox, and the Xbox has a lot more detail showing on the floor. Also, the Xbox is the only one with slightly different color on the floor. Zooming in, you can see the anti-aliasing is a smidget better on Xbox vs PS2 and GameCube. A closer look at the dock floor, the Xbox is a different color. So many broken up lines. Also, some of the glass on the PS2 and GameCube are more translucent versus the Xbox and PC. Comparing just Nintendo 64 and PS1, because there's no way they even compare to the better systems, the draw distance on them both suck, but they are the same. The Nintendo 64 has pop-ins come in pretty smooth, but the PS1 has them come in all blocky in sections. 
The PlayStation is a lot more crisp overall, but as stated earlier, way more blocky and jittery. I'd say the Nintendo 64 wins this battle. Although when zooming in on the theater wall, this one and only this poster has a black line going across it. Who's Bruce? And why does someone want to kill him? The picture kind of looks like Dr. Doom. On the PS1 and Nintendo 64, they went ahead and put a big building there instead of the alleyway with a fire truck. All have this movie theater and a nice touch on the Nintendo 64 and PS1 to add posters. Also, the buildings are a bit different, and no street lines on these two. So basically, these aren't a pour and a reduction of pixels. The game was completely remade for the PS1 and Nintendo 64, and the layout for the most part was kept the same. If you look here, the planters are different, and so are the buildings. Now back to the good stuff. Hold up, let's rewind that. Here's another example of a different floor on the Xbox. The street has different textures and a different color. If we progress a bit more, the Xbox has two different trees here compared to the other three. In fact, all the trees are different on the Xbox. A super zoomed in shot. It goes best to worst from right to left. At first, I was going to chalk this up to different camera angles, but actually they are all the exact same. The ramps and the rail are all lined up perfectly, but the mountains in the background on PC are a lot higher. Looks like the GameCube gets a point. You see the chimneys on the PC and GameCube, but not on the PS2 and Xbox. And yet another example on a different tree. There isn't any snow on the Xbox version. Also, let's zoom in on this cabin. You can see ice shingles on the GameCube and PC, but not on the PS2 and Xbox. I wanted to show PS1 and Nintendo 64 one more time. This Tokyo level is super cool, and I was curious how it would look on the old ass hardware. Well, not so good. The blimp is completely missing from the level, and as expected the draw distance is terrible. On the PS2 there's a transparent red floor you can skate on under the blimp. On PS1 and Nintendo 64 you get this weird black blob with no blimp, and I'm not really sure if you can skate on it or not because I couldn't figure out how to do it. Just like on the other level, everything looks different, but the layout is the same. Going back to the big boys, it's safe to say that the sexy chick is sexy on all four. The aliasing is pretty bad though on the consoles. Something to note, the lines here on the Xbox are thicker and more yellow. Just another example of a different asset used on the Xbox. Let's dive into the handhelds a little bit. The menus on the Game Boy Color and Advance are completely different, same with the Skater Select. Just a completely different setup but the Game Boy Color version actually resembles the console versions more closely with the use of the interior of the skate shop. Gameplay on the Color is a side-scroller with some freedom of movements, and Game Boy Advance is more isometric. Both look pretty good for the hardware that they're on though, and both are actually pretty fun to mess around with. Nothing I'd say go out and buy, but just fun to mess with. All the console elements are there, just like collecting the letters, getting high scores, and doing objectives to unlock new stuff. I did get the game for Mac, but I can't find any way to capture my gameplay for this older Mac OS Panther, but I was able to play at max settings with the lower frame rate, so I decided to play at medium at high frame rates. There was a lot of aliasing just like on the consoles. My G4 iBook is a 1.2 GHz and 256 MB of RAM, but all in all, it played pretty well. I did order a VGA dongle from eBay, so for any future side-by-sides that will need this Mac, I'll have a way to capture stuff. Well, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment, and share this video. Thanks again, and take it easy.